we want to chant purely, first of all, it's necessary to hear. Nam Tattva, from the lotus lips of a Nam Tattva with Vaishnava, one who has realized Nam Do you know that Bhakti has nine limbs, Navada Bhakti, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Asnavaranam, Dasma, Satyam, Patmani, Vedanam. Yesterday, we began by discussing how Prabhupada Bhakti Stasso Thakur said, the Gaudiya Mat is the place in a world of Abhivakruti, in the world of confused meanings of words, the Gaudiya Mat is the place of the descent of Vidvat Rudi, meaning of words. If we are to have a discussion, it's important to understand the meaning of the words that we're using. And all too often, we are using words without having a clear understanding what they mean. So what does, in order to do kirtan, to chant, first we have to do sravan. So what is actually the meaning of kirtan? Sorry, sravan. If you can understand the meaning of the word sravan, then the meaning of kirtan will become clear. And in relation to your question, the meaning of smarana will become clear. In Bhakti Sandarabha, Siddha Jiva Goswami Bhagavan has said, he there, he, def- he uh, dedicates several anuchets, or like chapters if you like, to each one of the angles of Bhakti, so that we can clearly understand the meaning of each anger of Bhakti. So, after discussing the Guru Bhagasrai taking shelter of Shri Guru, Shailagati, surrender and service to Sri Guru, then he begins to discuss Sravana, Kirtana, Smarana, etc. So, Sravana. Pratamam Namna Sravanam antakaranam shudhyatam apeksham shudhej antakarane rupa sravanena tanudoy yogyata bhavati samyag uditej rupe gunanam spurnam sampadyate The meaning is this. In the beginning, it is expected that one should simply hear the holy name in order to cleanse the antakaram. Pratamam Namna, in the beginning, Namna, the holy name Sravanam. Antakarna Shudyatam for the purpose of purifying the antakaran. Antakar karan means senses. You have Bahikaran, outer senses, and you have your chitta, your subtle body, that is the antakaran, the inner senses. Manas, Bodhi, Ahamkara, and Chitta. Four parts of the subtle body. So, in the beginning, it is expected that one should simply hear the pure name from the lips of pure Vaishnavas in order to cleanse the Antakara. That means that the Chitta should become the Shuddha, pure. What is Chitta? And does everyone know what is Chitta? You know, Mahabhu said, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, it's the first thing when it comes to chanting. I have to clean the chitta. So, essentially, when, before the creation, Prakriti is in equilibrium, Satraj and Tamas are in equilibrium, so nothing is manifest. And when the Supreme Lord decides to create, why? 
For the poorest devotees. Yeah, that's what he's doing, isn't it? Huh? That is primary. And secondary, everything else comes along. So, when the Supreme Lord creates, by his Kriya Shakti, the balance, there is a guna udbod, the breaking of the balance of the gunas, and they begin to manifest. So the first manifestation from Prakriti is called the Mahatattva. It is a very highly sattvic. There's no Shuddha Sattva in this world. It's always mixed, but it's to the highest degree possible. It is uh, sattvic. That is Mahatattva. It has, there's no form in that. There's no uh, activity. It's Niskriya also. But it's the first element. And that element, when it's in the universe, is called Mahatattva. But when that element is in your Shukshma Shri, your subtle body, then it's called Chittayas. Chitta. Now everything else is simply the gradual stages of the grossification of the Chitta. When Rajas is introduced by the Kriya Shakti, then that there is a slight grossification of the element of Chitta, and it now act, becomes, is capable of moving. It's become slightly grossified, slightly condensed, you know, like air vapor. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the water is completely evaporated, you can't see it. There's about, what, 74%, 78% water in the air around, so you can't see it. Um, but under certain atmospheric pressure, you'll see it starts to make a cloud. So like this, there's a grossification, a condensation of the element of Chitta and by Rajagun, and it becomes an element called Sutra Tattva. Sutra Tattva. As you can see, it's explained by Kabil in the third canto and by Sikrishna in the eleventh canto. Now, Sutra Tattva, this is the Mukya Pran, the original manifestation of Pran. It is the Pran of the whole universe and the subtlest form of Pran within your subtle body. It is that by which if there's any move, movement, if there's any motion anywhere, it's done by Pran. If there's any organization of the world, the universe, or your body, it's all done by Pran. Now when this Pran, it is the modifying all the time. So basically, when you, when you look at something, when you see something, you never see it out there in the world. Your sense contacts it, and then your chitta transforms and makes a facsimile of that object in your chitta. And your soul is seeing that. Huh? Just like if you ever put it in camera mode, you point it at something, then what happens? The screen transforms and makes a copy of what's in front of it. And you're looking at that. See? So that's what's happening all the time. Like right now, you're looking at me, but actually your chitta has transformed according to its ability, according to its degree of purity or impurity, and made a form of me, and your soul is looking at that. That's, how, that's the mechanics of perception, according to Vedanta. And you can, don't try to verify this, but if a person has a, a fever, a very high fever, who's ever had typhoid? Okay, so, yeah. So you have a life, you're going about 106, you start to hallucinate, right? So you see the floor is breathing and things are moving around, or, or someone takes some drugs, but everyone else is looking, they don't see that the floor is moving, they, right? But you're seeing out there, but it was never, it was because the objects are really there, but you're always seeing the screen version in the resolution according to the, the purity of your chitta. Uh, and your soul is seeing that. This is how perception works. Uh, okay. So, when you see something, something comes in front of your eyes, your chitta transforms and becomes that object and you see it. So that moment in real time, when you see that object, then that particular transformation, that particular model of the outer world that you're looking at, is called Pratyay. Pratyay. But then, let's say I'm looking at this and then someone takes it away, 
So I don't see it anymore. But that pratyah sinks then into the, uh, out of the vision of your conscious mind, but it's still there in the chitta. So that solid form, we've gone from the chitta having no formal movement to prana, which is rajasic, first is tattvic, then rajasic, then an impression of the outer world, all the outer elements are tamasic. So by taking in a kind of injection of, the, of tamas into the chitta by contact with the outer world, then that pran which may perform solidifies and stays in your chitta, and that impression which is staying there in your chitta is called samskar. Impression. Just like if you go to the beach in the morning after the tide has gone out, the sand is a little wet, and you walk through, and you look behind, you'll see all the footprints are there. So all the footprints of every pratyai, every experience you've had in this life, and all of your previous lives, are there in your chitta. Right now, the chitta is not, may not be available, it may not be visible to you. Why? Because when many, many impressions come together, and the chitta becomes darkened, then that mass aggregate of samskars is called ahankar. Mm-hmm. Ahankar is called vasanamai. It is a condensed mass of impressions. But all of those impressions are not active at this moment. Because in previous lives you had the experience of being in the insect life, in animal life, in bird life, in human life, in demigod life, in demon life, different births. So all those impressions are there, but they're not all activated at the same time. So give an example. If there's a lake of water, then the moon shines, and the reflection of the moon is only illuminating one portion of that lake. There are some little particles of dust and so on in the water, and they are reflecting the moonlight. So, in this comparison, let's take the lake as your entire chitta. And the particles of dust, all the samskars of all your lives. And the consciousness of your soul now is illuminating only one portion of that. So at the moment, the samskar is related to being a human being, being male or female, are activated at the moment. So there's a, there's a, um, a correlation between the body you're in and your experiences in this life, and samskars from previous life related to that kind of identity. Sometimes, you know, people, their samskars get mixed up, and they get a kind of gender dysphoria and that kind of thing, because we've all been male and female, and so on. So, though there's a certain portion of those samskars are activated right now, and that's your hankara that you have at the moment. So, we tend to think, well, I know who I am. This is me. I am whatever. Um, uh, an artistic person, or I am a, a business person, or I am a sporty person, or I am a political person, whatever it is. I'm a nourishing, motherly person, whatever. People have an idea of their identity. It's just that group of samskars which are illuminated at that moment. And gradually that moon is moving across the water. So lifetime after lifetime, you leave those and then take up another, another, another. Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jangunan Karna guna sangosya sad asad yoni jamasu. The Purush, the Jiva, the living entity, is situated in prakti, prakriti, and according to his association with the gunas, he's taking birth in pious and in pious species. You see? Because when we associate with a particular guna, then that association triggers the sanskars from before related to that guna. And then they become active, and in this way, from lifetime after lifetime, we're moving up and down by a combination of our association 
and the impressions that we already have. In synergy, working together with passing through. So, Karanam Guna Sangosya, Sar Asat Yoni Janasu. By association of the modes, we are taking birth in higher and lower pious and impious situations. Okay? Now, from the Ahankar, some portion of it is more sattvic, and that transforms and becomes the mind, which is doing sankalpa vikalpa, accepting and rejecting. One portion, the rajasic portion becomes buddhi. And then from the tamasic portion comes akash. Comes akash. Akash is a very wonderful element. It accommodates the movements. In other words, Kapil Deva said a very important verse, Bhutanam Chidradatritvam Bahir Antara Evacha Pranendriyatmadisnyatvam Navaso Vritilakshanam These are the symptoms of Akash. So first he said, Bhutanam Chidradatritvam Akash, or space, is that which produces like a hole, or the room to accommodate the Buddhas, the elements. What kind of Buddhas? What kind of elements? Bahi antara The outer elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, but it also accommodates the inner elements. Pranindriya medisyatam. The pran, the indriya, the senses, and atma him is the mind, chitta, everything. So pranindriya the disnatvam, that means that disnatvam means that the akash forms the basis or the field on which mind, pran, and senses meet. So this uh, akash within is sometimes contracting by the lower gunas and sometimes expanding by the higher gunas, particularly sattvagun. So sattvagun causes your chit, the, the chitta, which is an element, but it's accommodated by akash. So when the akash within expands, your chitta expands, and when the akash within contracts, then the chitta is contracting like this. So the, the chitta is expanding and contracting in the akash. When your chitta contracts, you feel very bad. Because it's with the lower gunas. Rajas gives uh, desire and anxiety, and then tamas gives pain. And rajas always turns into the tamas. It's unstable. Unless it, if rajas is regulated, if someone has discipline in their life, and it's controlled, then by discipline, rajas will turn into sattva. But if someone is irresolute and unprincipled, then their passion will always degrade into tamas. Mm-hmm. So, now, very interesting, because we, what are we talking about? Uh, we're, we're trying to discuss our subject, but before we can discuss the subject, we have to know the meaning of the words that we're using. Because if we're all using words, but we, we all have a different idea of what those words mean, then communication has not taken place. This is why Bhaktisthan Sotaku said the Gaudiya Mat is the place of the descent of the Vidvat Ruti. That means the meaning, the Ruti, the meaning of the words as they are understood by the consciousness of the enlightened pure person. So, people speak about happiness and distress. But what does that mean? What is happiness? The Sanskrit word for happiness is sukha. And, the, and, and the, the Sanskrit word for distress is dukkha. Uh, now, I have a question for you. What does the word ka mean? Ka means akash. You see? Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, shabda ke parashamra, I am the sound in ether, shabda ke. So ka, in the locative case, becomes ke. So Shabda Ka means I am the Shabda the sound in the Ka, in the Akash. So Ka means Akash. So what does Su mean? Su means good, or, it's a prefix that means good or beautiful. And Du 
Is it prefix that means bad? Hmm? Hmm? Or it's a negative. Hmm? So, sukha, what we say, happiness, which no one can really define in the kind of in the modern contemporary terms of the English language, what happiness really is. Huh? But in Sanskrit, it's exactly, it says exactly what it is, sukha, beautiful akash. Good, the akash has expanded, your chitta has expanded in the akash, and because your chitta has expanded in the ka, it's called sukha. And when, by rajagun and tamagun, your chitta contracts, then you feel all nervous and in anxiety and angry and jealous and all these negative emotions come. That is dukkha, that your chitta has contracted in the akash. So, what do we want to do? Chaito darpana marjanam. It's just like if you have a piece of paper. If you get this piece of paper and you make it dukkha, that means you contract the space that it's occupying. Okay, there it is. That's your chitta. When you're not feeling so good. <laughs> You see, it's not smooth. <laughs> it's full of some scars, right? It's got wrinkles and creases and everything in it. Huh? Like a disaster. <laughs> so what we need to do is, as you go towards Satvagun, the chitta begins to expand. So what happens automatically when the chitta expands? Then all the crinkles, the wrinkles, the sun scars which are in it, are slowly getting weaker and weaker and weaker until Chaito Dhamma comes. And when Chaito Dhamma takes place, Baba Mahadava Nini Ravanam, the fire of material existence goes out. Because the Ahankar, which was a mass of all those impressions, was causing the Kartritra, the feeling that I am this body and I am the doer. You see? So the first thing we have to do, Pratamam Namna Shravanam Antakaranam Shudyadam Apeksham. This is the meaning of hearing. By hearing attentively, the Antakaran or the Chitra, which was contaminated and full of sanskars, should be expanded so those sanskars are eradicated. Not fully yet, that will come later, but to a large degree. And when they are eradicated, those sanskaras manifest as vasana or desires. So as the sanskaras are becoming weaker and weaker and weaker, the desires are disappearing. So when one comes to the stage of nishta, Vishnachari Thakur describes nishta as chitta ikagra, the point where the chitta has become ikagra. One point is near Vikar. It's not going here and there. It's not oscillating. It's not modifying. And that's why Nishta and Anya Bilashta Sunyam coincide with each other. We free from desire, more or less, there's still a little bit of impression there. When Nishta comes, then the, des- the Vasanas are not coming because the desires are not coming because the Sanskars have become so weak and many of them have been eradicated. There's still. Um, a, a small scent of them, and that will not go until ruchi. That's the definition of ruchi. Ruchi, papa bij nashad, madhurya anubhavaha. In the commentary of Mukunda Goswami on Bhakti Goswami to Sindhu, he says, ruchi, papa bij nashad, arising from the destruction of papa bij, the seeds of sin. So sin means when you're actually going around doing sinful things. So while you're doing Bhajana Kriya and Anathani Vritti, you stop doing all those things. Huh? But there's still Papa Beach. Some impressions are there of past sins. So by doing Bhajan, really that means engaging in Bhakti. Uh, in the stage of Nishta, then Ruchi Papa Beach Nashat comes the destruction of Papa Beach. Those impressions are also destroyed. When they're also gone, then Madhurya Anubhavaha, there awakens an, an Anubhav, a realization of Madhurya, Krishna's sweetness. And that's why it's called Ruchi. Because you can't have taste unless you're tasting something. 
And what is it that we taste in the stage of Ruchi? Madhuri Anubhava. The Madhuri, the sweetness of Krishna. So, Acha. So we're just trying to get, explain the Vidva Bruti meaning of the word Shravanam, hearing. Pratamam namna Shravanam antakarna shudhyatam apiksham. The chitta, the antakaran, should become shuddha. Now here, shuddha does not mean the Vishuddha Sattva. It is not transcendental, only means purified to the degree that it exists ontologically. Remember when Chitta manifests this element, it's very, very highly sattvic. So Shuddha Chitta means it is uh, the grossification that had taken place has been reversed and it is reverted back to its natural condition. Just like water which is polluted can be distilled, it just goes back to being now pure water. So the pure here, Shuddha Antakara means pure chitta. It's not some does not mean anything Vishuddha Sattva, Sandini, Samhidlani, anything like that. Only very highly sattvic. Okay? Now, what happens when the chitta comes to that stage? Shudantakaram Shudyatam Apeksham. Then the next line. Shudaj Antakarane. Rupa Sravanena Tadudoi Yogyata Bhavati. There's a sign that the chitta has become Shuddha. And that is Rupa Sravanena, when you hear about the form, the beautiful form of Krishna. Kasturi Tilakam Lalata Patale Vakshastale Kostavam Nasa Kravaramoptikam. You see? Karakatale Kante. He has the bangles on his wrist, kare kankanam, holding the fruit, sarangi hari chandanam, his body is made with sandalwood paste, sulaitam kante chamuktavi, he's wearing garland of pearls, gopastri paravestito vijayate go pal chudamani, all glories to the crestula of coward boys, surrounded by beautiful gopis of Vrindavan. So, through such verses, which are verses for Rupatyana, when we hear, just by hearing that, from a sadhu who has realization, when the chitta is clean, then tad udoi yogyata bhavati, one becomes yogyata, a fit recipient for the udoi, the awakening of that form within the chitta. That means that the form of Krishna is reflected in the pure chitta. So we've discussed the definition of akash. What was the definition of Akash? Yes. Okay, yes, first thing. Bhutanam Chitra Dhatritvam. It gives a Chitra. Chitra literally means a hole, like a hole in Krishna's Buddha called Chitra. So Chitra, it makes a hole, an accommodating space for the elements. Bahir Antara, the outer elements and inner elements. And for the inner elements, it's, the flat, it's a platform where they meet. Manas, Pran, and Indriya. They meet. Huh? And the chitta also. Yeah, here manas is, sometimes you'll find this in Shastra, the chitta sometimes refers not only to chitta, but to the whole subtle body. And sometimes manas is used, and it refers to the whole, the chitta and everything. You see? So it depends on the context. If they're used together, chitta, ankar, buddhi, manas, then obviously they refer to the particular elements. But often you'll find the word manas is used just in a general way. It means the whole shushma sharia. Sometimes chitta is used. It means the whole shushma sharia. Antakaran is an example which definitely refers to the whole shushma sharia. So it depends on the context. Yeah. Now, um, we discussed the akash. Now let's discuss the definition of chitta. Swachat is also third canto. Swachat twam, abhikari twam, Santa Tuamiti Chaitasa. This is the chitta. It has three characteristics. Swachatvam, Avikaritvam, and Santatvam. Avikar, I'm going to come back to the first one. I'll tell the other two first. Avikaratvam means that it's not having any vikar. It's not undergoing transformation. It's not oscillating. That's the nature of pure chitta. 
because it's nisqaya, it does not have activity. And shantatva means free from uh, rag attachments and free from lie. Lie means laziness. And when your chitra is pure, you don't fall asleep while you're chanting Java. Because there's no dullness there. It's bright and free from attachment. You don't meditate on sense gratification while chanting Java or don't fall asleep. Very often it happens in the first days that our Jap is just oscillating between the two, falling asleep and meditating on sense gratification. That means that the chitta is contaminated by Rajasantana. So, pure jitta is shantatva, no attachment and laziness. Avikaratva is not oscillating. But the first one is very interesting and it will be the key to understanding many, many tattvas about the process of bhakti. That is swachatva. Swachatva. Swacha literally means pure or clear. But all the Acharyas, from Sridhar Swami to Vishnu Chakitakura and Jivuga Swami, they say the same thing. That Swachatva means Bhagavad Bimba Grahitva. Bhagavad means Supreme Lord Krishna. Bimba means reflection. And Grahitva is the power to catch or, re- or accept. So when the Jitta is uh, pure, then it has this capacity Bhagavad Bimba Grahitva. The power to catch the reflection of the Supreme Lord. Understand? So, I'll give one example. And do you know the verse? Sattvam Visuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. Very famous. Yadiyate Tatra Kumam Pavritaha. Yeah, Maharaj. Sattvam Visuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. It's vaguely familiar? Yeah. 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 Spoken by Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. When he's explaining why he didn't give pranam when Daksha Maharaj arrived. You know in the Daksha Yagya? Mahadev was there and Daksha Maharaj arrived. Everyone stood up and gave pranam except for Mahadev. So then Daksha became angry and cursed him and there was all, you know, there's a big scandal in the Daksha Yagya. And of course, then uh, um, Sati becomes very upset and she does the, yeah, the, the spontaneous combustion and gives up her body. and It's a big drama. But here in this verse, Lord Shiva is explaining why he didn't give pranam to Daksha. And the reason was, is because he was in Samadhi. He was in a trance. And he was seeing the Supreme Lord in his heart. And he was constantly bowing down to the Supreme Lord in his Samadhi. Now, when a respectable person comes, like that Maharaj, then it's the social etiquette that everyone gives pranam. The children, when they wake up in the morning, they should go and give pranam and touch the feet of their parents and so on. This is Varnashram Dharma. But what's the real meaning of Dharma? The actual secret is that the respect is given to the Paramatma in the heart of the person. In Vedic culture, the wife is very, very submissive and serves the husband. So nowadays, people get all kind of, you know, aerated about this and, and disturbed, like the, as if it's some kind of pressure. No, it's a practice. The consciousness is that I'm serving the Supreme Lord who lives in the heart of Paramatma. So this is how Varnashram Dharma works. It's a preparation for the higher consciousness. So, Mahadev said that mm, when he comes, then everyone gives pranam, but the meaning of that is giving pranam to the Paramatma in, in him. But I was in Samadhi. I was already in a trance and given pranam. Yeah. <laughs> so even though it looks that there was a fault in Lord Shiva that he has disrespected Daksha, but he was giving more respect than anyone else. Because they were giving pranam, and they may or may not have been aware that it's really to the Paramatma. But Mahadev was seeing everything, and so they, it looks like there's a fault, but there's no fault in it at all. Now, I'm telling this verse because it's very interesting. Satvam Visuddham Vasudeva Shantitam. There is 
a state, a condition of purity called the Vasudev. And Vasudev is another name for Vishuddha Sattva. That is the transcendental atmosphere. So he said, in that transcendental atmosphere of Vishuddha Sattva, then, Yadiyate Tattra Puman Apavrita, the Supreme Lord Puman, he Purush, is Apavrita, experienced uncovered. Is it clear? When you're in the stage of Vishuddha Sattva, that means from Bhav, Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma Prema Suryam Susamyavak Uchivistitamatrit Masriya Kudaso Bhav Uchite. So in the stage of Bhav, Vishuddha Sattva comes and you can experience God directly. That is called in this verse Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shavitam Yadinate Tatakuam Apavrita. God is experienced without any covering. So now the question comes, well, what's the experience of God with a covering? Hmm? This verse says, in love, you can experience God without any covering. So what's the meaning of God with a covering? That is Bhagavad Bimba Gurhitva. From the stage of Nishta onwards, the possibility comes to experience the reflection of the root of Bhagavan in your chitta. And that is considered to be the Abbas. The root abbas. But it's still a real a transcendental realization. And that abbas becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And then when the Shuddha Sattva comes, then it's not an abbas anymore, it's direct. That's just the meaning of the verse. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam Yadiyate Tatra Puman Abhav is uncovered. And now this is covered. This is like a sporty as opposed to yeah. constant. Um, no, there are different kinds of sporty. There's the sporty, which is the, uh, the, the, the bimba, the reflection in the chitta, and that can also be a sporty in the stage of love. And there can be antar sporty, inner sporty, and outer sporty. And then, of course, when you get to anarag, it becomes vipralanga visporty. And then in highest, we'll discuss that later when we go into radicus bars. So that there are degrees of sporty, but that's also called a, a, a sporty. And that's what Jiva Goswami is saying here, starting from the beginning. Pratamam namna shravanam antakarna shudyatama bhakshav. In the beginning, it is expected that one should simply hear the holy name by which the antakarna becomes purified. Shudecha antakarne. And when the antakarna is pure, then rupa shravanena, by listening to the description of Krishna's form, tad udoi yogyata bhavati, it awakens. You become qualified for that awakening. Now, as one goes on hearing and chanting and the jitta becomes a little bit more purified, samyag uti techa rupe, and when the form of Krishna has awakened completely in the heart, guna announce for announce sampadya day. When you hear about the qualities of Sri Krishna, then Krishna's qualities begin to appear. When the qualities are fully awakened, then you hear about the parikas the associates. And then Krishna's associates begin to manifest in the heart. And in that stage, gradually, you will, uh, by being absorbed in one associate, your chitta will transform and become like that associate. So now you, your siddhat roof begins to appear. So all then, the, yes. All this is from the stage of Tattva Vishuddham Vasudev Shabditam, or before? Ah, this is all before. This is all before, everything before. I'll tell you the exact stage. In Nishta, Nam, Rup, and some Gun, the Aishwarya Gun. When Ruchi comes, then, because not only the Bhak, the sins of God, but the Bhak Beach, the, the, the fine impressions of sins have been destroyed, then Ruchi gives you the experience, Madhuri Anubhava, the experience of the sweet qualities of Krishna and his parikas in the stage of Ruchi. In the stage of Asakti, your own surup appears. And then by serving in that surup internally in your meditation, that's how Bhav comes. That's Vishuddha Sattva. Huh? Those are the stages. And this is why Rupa Goswami has explained Raghunuga Bhakti in just two verses. Huh? What are the two verses in which Rupa Goswami explained 
So they started a revenue governing. Only two. Do you remember? The first one, Krishna was Krishna Yeah. Krishna was Bharam Janam Chasya Prastam Nija Sumitam Tatakata Ratas Chaso Koriya Dvasam Prajay Sada. The meaning is one should remember Krishna along with an associate. So everyone says, yeah, I'll do that. Wait a minute. Just come learn what hearing means first. Is your chitta purified? Has the root of Krishna awakened? Has the guna of Krishna awakened? Have the parikas awakened? So this verse is already referring to the person in that stage who can do parikas marana, which is ruchi. Krishna smaram janam chasya prastamni jasmita tatakatara chasita so be absorbed always in hearing about the pastimes of that associate along with Krishna and always residing in Braj. If you cannot be there physically, at least in your heart, you should always reside in Braj. So that's the first verse Rupa Goswami gives explaining Raghunuga Sadhana. It's a stage. When you follow that verse, then you gradually become qualified for the next verse. Seva, Sadaka, Rupena, Siddha Rupena Chatrahi, Tatbhavaksnakarya Brajalokana Sarata. One should serve in this form, your form as a sadhak, and also serve in your siddha roof. Many people are confused about how do you get the siddha roof? Does no one have to give it to you? Do you have to go somewhere and get it quickly in, a, in like a drive through siddha pranada? <laughs> how, how do you get it? Can it be given to anyone? No. It cannot be given, and you cannot just take it. But Rama, Rupa Goswami has explained exactly how to get that Siddha Roop in the previous verse. Krishna Svaram Janam Chasya. That's how, he told you how to get it right there. But if you don't understand what Smaran is, because when you speak, your words are avid vadhudi. It's not the actual meaning of the words as they what they mean to Rupa Goswami who's writing Bhakti Rasamrita Singh. This is why Bhakti Sanzotaku said the Gaudiya Math is the place of the descent of the Vidva Turi of words. The actual meanings. If you know what the word Smarnam means, then you'll not be confused and you'll understand this is how the Siddha root appears. Once it appears, starts to appear by bhajan, you can go to a bhajan shikshi guru and reveal your heart. Guya Mathiti Prachati. And he can confirm the identity, what is your name and form and services, your cloth and these things. Mostly they'll come by themselves, but he can confirm. And if there's something that's not clear, he can refine it a little bit. That's called Upasaka Pariskriti, the purification of the conception of the worshipper. Upasaka Pariskriti. When you hear about the pastimes of Radha Krishna, that's Upasya Pariskriti. It clarifies your understanding of Upasya, whom you are serving, whom you are worshipping. And when you hear about yourself, that is called Upasaka Prasakriti, the refinement of the conception of the Upasaka, the one who is doing the service to the Upasaka. You see? So, Vidvatruti. We've got ahead of ourselves just a little bit, but it's spontaneous that I'm responding to your questions. Um, because I'll come to Smaran afterwards, but we've kind of got ahead of ourselves and told what Smaran really is. Let's first know what hearing is. So hearing is first Nam Shravanam. It cleanses the heart. Then Rup Shravanam. One has purity of Rup. As one becomes more purified, then Gun Shravan, Parikar Shravan, then Lila. Lila comes next. But in the stage of realization, in between Parika and Lila, you begin Seva. Seva is a, is a stage in between. So Lila, Lila Sravan. So by listening, all of these things come gradually. That's the meaning of Sravan. Now what's the meaning of Kirtan? Kirtan means what we have heard, we are repeating that. So first we do Nam Kirtan. And when the heart is purified by Nam Kirtan, Rup Kirtan, Gun Kirtan, like this Lila Kirtan. So you can see Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his 
some books like uh, Kalyana Kalpataru and the Gita, the, uh, Gita Vala Gita Avali, he is given chapters, chapter on uh, uh, Nam Sankirtan. Like what Nam Sankirtan did he give? Bolo Hari Hari Ukunda Murari Rama Krishna Hare Griva Vashinga Pavan Simadu Sura Prajanda Nandana Shama And Yashwati Nandana Pratipara Naga Gokula Randana Kadisa Nandana Then he gives a Gun Kirtan hmm? Like Jamana Masafalata Krishna Gada Shamaja But again, sorry, Gun Kirtan that is that is the root kirtan. And then gun and lila kirtan. Like shatakoti gopi madamama and rakite narlo korijatan venugite dake radikanam eisho eisho radikake esha. How Radhika has left the ras lila and Krishna is calling on his flute but you can't find her. So he's searching and searching finally he sits down in the kunj and just he's crying and begging. Dei sundari. Hmm? Oh sundari. Please save my life and come back to me. So Sila Bhaktivinoda has given all these kirtans. But everything is included in Nam kirtan. So when the devotee is advanced, just by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, internally everything manifests. So that's the meaning, this is the meaning of Sravan, the meaning of kirtan, now the meaning of Smaran. Smaran is, in Sila Jivakaswani Pada said, that Chuta Antakarnas Chet Smaran Koryat Kirtana Aparityagaha. First of all, don't give up Kirtan. Don't think, oh, I did Sraman, I did Kirtan, and now I stop those, I'm just doing Smaran now. He says, without giving up Kirtan, Chuta Antakarnas Chet. If your Antakaran is actually pure, then you should do Smaran Remembrance. Because the, if the chitta is not pure, your mind is going everywhere and only smaran will not control it. But kirtan will control it. Kirtan will control the mind. That's why he said in, in, in Rabbanuga Bhakti, Rabbanuga Chandrika, that though Krishna smaram janam chasya is there and smaran is the mukhya anga, the main limb of Rabbanuga Bhakti, but this smart is Kirtan Adheem. Kirtan Adheem means subordinate to and under the control of Kirtan. Kirtan Adheem. You understand this word Adheem? Aham Bhakta Paradheem. Yes, Satan. Krishna said, I am not independent. I am subordinate, controlled by my devotee. So Adheem means subordinate or controlled. And this is Adheem. I'll give another example. Uh, the 10th offense to the whole name. Sutta api namahatne yapriti rautodama ahamamani paramo nami sopya varadakrit. Means even after hearing so much about the glories of the name, to not have affection for the name. And how do we manifest that affection? Ahamamani paramo. By holding on to the conception of aham mama, I and mine. Material identification with body and my mind and possessiveness for the things of this world. I and mind are the best. There are so many countries in the world, but out of all of them, God bless America. <laughs> but in America, there are many states, but out of all of them, Florida is the best. The Sunshine State. And out of all the places in Florida, the best place is. Miami, right. And there are millions of people in Miami, but in Miami, my group of friends. And out of all my group of friends, I am the best. Which is said in the 11th canto, the symptom of the mode of passion is that you think that you are better than others and special. Hmm? that you are unique and special and also better than others, that's the sign. And just you can become your own Ayurvedic doctor. <laughs> take, your, take your pulse, put your fingers on your pulse and ask yourself, do you feel like that or not? And is that what your heart is whispering? I am better. I am special. 
Guess what that is? It's an infection of Rajguru. Because when that Rajguru goes away, to the peace we need Chaina, to over the peace we need Chaina, Amadeda, Amadeda, Vitanya, Sadhana. One becomes more humble than the Vedic Christ. Giving respect to everyone. Not secretly uh, minimizing them internally. Okay, so this is offense to the holy name. Aham Amari Paramo, I am the best. Hmm? To hold on to this concept of I am my. Yeah. And also, you see, Nasnapi Goswami in his commentary on his Namaparats in the Harimakti Vilas, he says that another aspect of this Aham Amari Paramo is this to think that Nam Prabhu is Jiva Adhi. Mm. Jiva means Tam. What does Adhi mean? Uh, control or, under, or controlled by, dependent on, subordinate to. So if you think, now I am chanting the name. My tongue, hmm? if I don't move my tongue, there's no name. And if I move the tongue, now the name appears. So if you think that Nam Prabhu is Jiva Adhi, you're committing the tenth offense to the holy name. And what happens when you do Namaparad? No sporty. The chitta doesn't get clean, and there's no sporty. If you give up ten times of Namaparad, the chitta will be cleansed, chitta dhapana vajana will go on, and even Namabas will give us sporty. It's all sporty. Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, it's all, it, it's all Namabas. The Shuddha Nam means Shuddha Satma, Vishay Shatma. Satvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabdita. That is the Shuddha. And before that, only some light of the name is coming. You know, do you know Namastakam of Rupa Goswami? What's the third verse? Yada Vaso Pyodvanka Valita Bhavadvanta Vibhavo Drisham Tattvam Tanda Nam Bhakti Pranayanim Janas Tasyoda Tam Jagati Bhagavan Nama Tarne Kriti Te Ne Vakta Ahya Mahimanam Prabhavati Third verse of Namastakam Rupa Goswami said What learned, educated, intellectual person can describe the extent of your glories, O shining son of the holy name, when even the Abbas, the dim light of your early dawn, Bhavadonta Vibhavo, destroys the darkness of bodily identification. Hmm? Bhavadonta Vibhavo, Dishati Bhakti Pranayanim, and gives one, a vision of the pure bhakti, in other words, the sporties of the Krishna's Nam, Ru, Gun, so on, they begin to manifest. So it gives one a vision of the experience of a transcendental service. So, if you think Nam is Jiva Deen under the control of your tongue, it's not up that. So, what's the solution? We have to pray that our tongue will become now Adi. Right? So the two things. Jiva Adi, that means the name is under the control of the tongue. No, we want to be in that stage that our tongue is now Adi, under the control of the name. Tundei tanda vani ratim vitantei tanda vali lantei kana krona kadam vini vitantei kana avadei pasteham cheta prangini sangini vijayatei savindriyane kutim no jane janita kyarvi amrita krishneti varnan dvahi when Haridas Thakur heard this verse for the first time from Rupa Goswami, he jumped up and began to dance. Oh, oh. Krishna Namera Mohama Sadhu Sadhu Shastra Muki Jani. Hmm? The, the sweetness of the holy name can only be received from the lips of the Sadhu who is reciting the, the, the Shastra. Hmm? Such, madhu, such sweetness is not available. Namera Maduri Kahan Aisi Nahi Shuni. You cannot hear anywhere else. When a non tattva Vaishnava speaks the sweetness of the holy name, then it becomes available, otherwise not. So in this verse, Rupa Goswami was saying, when I chant, then I'm not chanting, but the name is dancing on my tongue. Dancing there. I'm not chanting, tongue, the name is dancing. And I want, one tongue is not enough, I want millions of tongues. And then the name goes in the ear. Two ears are not enough, I want millions of ears. Then it goes into my chitta, chaito prangana. 
And then dance is there. The Swarup of Krishna dance is there. All my senses become alert. That means I go into Samadhi in a trance. This is the power of Nam. Nam Prabhava. So we're discussing here the Jivadin. No, now I mean, the tongue should be now I under the control of the Holy Name. That's the last offense to the Holy Name. We have to give them up. First one, second, first don't make offense to Vaishnavas. Gradually, gradually, that's like one of the last ones to, to know. When it's given up, then what happens? Taramante, Sava Shesta, Nama Sankirtan, Nirapurat, Nam Laile, Pai Premadhan. Mapu said, it's not complicated. Of all the angers of Bhakti, Kirtan is the best. And if one will simply give up the ten offenses, his brain will come. Brain will come. So, Smaranam, when the Chitta is purified, but without giving up Kirtan. So if the Chitta is purified and you're chanting Krishna's name, what's going to happen? The sport is coming in the Chitta. And you're focusing on that sporty and that smaranam. So smaranam is not separate from a sporty. Or it may be that a sporty that one has had, had before made an impression in your heart and you sit and then you remember that. That means you bring into your consciousness the impression that you previously experienced. But otherwise, other than these two options, one cannot do smaranam of Krishna. Why? In the sixth canto, Narayana explains that the mind cannot touch anything it has not previously experienced. So when you think of anything, it's always a combination of your past impressions. The mind, can, it's like a, if there's a computer, you don't put any apps on it, then what will it do? There's a computer, no operating system. What will it do? Nothing. Nothing. What will come on the screen is only what you put in. Hmm? If you install a program, you can turn it, open it, and if you put some photos on it, you can look at them. You can't look at a photo on your computer that you didn't download. Right? Is it possible? You can only experience on that screen what's already there. So in the same way, people say, oh, yeah, I'm going to meditate on Krishna. Okay. Have you seen Krishna? Then what will you meditate on? Huh? Your own sound scars of material experience. This is a fact. For combinations, combinations of various material sound scars. So when one tries to artificially do smart without the power of the name, then it increases the kalpa, imagination, abstraction. Uh, it increase, and Vikalpa, the imagination is a rajasic vritti of the land. So, yes. Let me just make one more point because it might go on. Yesterday we were discussing bhaktas that without the pure devotees we cannot know anything. We cannot approach the subject. And how Sadhu Sadhu is so important. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching Sanatana Goswami about the importance of Sadhu Sangha, he told a very beautiful and important verse which was uh, spoken in the prayers of Muchukunda Maharaj. I remember I was in S Singapore with Gurudev. And we stayed in the house of one devotee. And Gurudev sat down, we just arrived from the airport, he sat down with the devotees. And he said, Do you know the verse? Baba Baba Go! Janatoya Da Babetch. So, maybe one or two people knew it. Good as everyone, you have to learn this. Baba Baba Go! Janatoya Da Babetch. Janasita Yachu to Satsamagama. Satsangamo. Yahi Tadaiva Satkamo. Paravarishe. Twahi Jayate Ruti. The meaning is this. When. One's material existence is coming to an end. One sojourn, Baba Apavarga, in Baba, one sojourn in Baba, material existence, Apavarga is coming to an end. Then you get Sadhu Sangha. Hmm? 
Now, this is a poetic mm, device, a figure of speech in Sanskrit called the uh, Atishayakti Alankar. Atishayakti means a, a kind of exaggeration, where the cause and effect are reversed with each other in order to make extreme emphasis. For example, let's say there's a, a villain and there's a hero, and the villain approaches the hero. Then the poet will say, the villain fell down dead and the hero drew his sword. What really happened is he drew his sword first and then the villain fell dead. But it was so fast, you couldn't tell which one happened first. So in poetry, they'll reverse the cause and effect to show the speed, the power, the, they'll emphasize the effectiveness, the efficacy of the subject by using Atishayokti Alankar. So in, the, in this verse, Muchukunda Maharaj is using the Atishayokti Alankar. <coughs> that means he's saying, when one's material existence comes to an end, then you get Sadhu Sangha. No. When you get Sadhu When you get Sadhu Sangha, bang like that, so fast. Huh? It's so effective, invaluable, and so powerful. Hmm? Then your material existence will come to an end. That's what he's saying. Hmm? Now, how does that happen? So he said, Sasangamo uh, Yahi Tadaiva Tada means at that time, Eva only. Only at that time does it come to an end. There's no other chance. There's, there's no one wandering in this world and somehow they get out. No one gets out. Hmm? But Tadaiva, only at that time when they meet a Sadhu, they're out. But why? Satsangamo yahi tadaiva satkato. Here satkato means the Supreme Lord who is the shelter of the devotee. He is the Bhatim. He is the refuge. But it also has another meaning. Satkato here means a sporty. A sporty of the Lord. So the, the meaning here is this that when we come into Sadhu Sangha and we bow down and we try to surrender and chant every day, and that heart will gradually become clean. Then, by hearing the beautiful description of Krishna's Nam, Rup, Gun, and Lila from a sadhu, some sporty will come. Then, huh, Krishna's real. Huh? If you're in that stage like, well, some days I think Krishna's real, but some days I think, well, <laughs> did some clever person make this up? <laughs> no, I mean, the Bible has 18,000 verses, you couldn't make up all that. <laughs> So the, the mind, the mind speculates, speculates like this. It's called Komala Shraddha, that the faith is the not nirantarya mai. It's interrupted. There's the vyavada, interruptions in faith. Yeah, I believe in Krishna. Well, I'm not sure. But when there's a sporty by hearing, the re catching the reflection in the purified law, and huh, one has made contact now. Like Mahapu said to. Sadatana Goswami, dig on the east side of your house. If you move the soil a little bit, your hands will touch the box that the treasure is in, the treasure of praying. So if you just clean a little bit and have Sadhu Sangha, you can make touch, contact with the other side, with that world. And then one is sure, and one becomes enthused. So Prahmarisha Rati, and, and gradually once Rati comes, deep love. You cannot love Krishna if you don't know him. Once Gurudev said, there was a new person had come. And there were other devotees. And devotees were saying, so Gurudev, when we chant, should we remember Krishna? Gurudev said, he turned to the new person. And he said, can you remember my father? And the new person said, what? Sorry, what does he mean? said, can you remember my father? That new person said, I've never seen your father, how can I remember him? Then Gurudev turned to the devotee and said, exactly. said, so start from Nam. Begin from the name, in a sequence. Tan Nam, Arupa, Charitari, Suti, Tanaru, Smitjo, Kramena. What does Kramena mean? Kramena means in a Kram, steps, in a sequence. So Jiva Goswami calls this Kram Sopan Riti. The methodology of sequential steps of smarana. 
Svarnam should go in the steps Anam Rupa Chak, Nam Rup Gun Parika Sevalida. These five steps. So begin with the name gradually as these purges are coming. One can remember past impressions which came by association or uh, if the chitta is pure, there's no reason why the root of Krishna is not appearing there. If the chitta is purified, one is qualified. There's no reason why. Because as soon as the chitta is purified and one chants the name, then the root appears. So it's very important to overcome ten types of nalaparad. Does everyone know the ten nalaparads? No? You should try to learn. In our Chaitanya Academy, the two things you learn from the first day. Das Mool Shiksha, ten teachings of Mahapu, and Das Aparat, ten offenses. Because if we, if we don't understand basic tattva, and we don't give up, try to give up ten offenses every day while we're chanting, Chaito Dhaprana Marjanam will not go on. So we've just been discussing the tenth one. Ahamamali Paramo Namni Sopya Paradekrit. I was hoping that would clarify. Is your question still there, Maharaj? Did that clarify it? If my question is still there, I, I don't want to disturb. No, you can ask. Because it's I have question comment, but one question. It's fine. Okay, one question is you're saying that the form of the Lord will come, will mm -hmm. manifest. Yes. And if one has had a previous party, yes. then it may be that form of the Lord. The, he can actively bring that consciously mm -hmm. by his own volition, bring that sanskar into his mind. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. now, now we'll reveal new things that you've never experienced, and then that again will become a sanskar. Okay. So as the sanskars collect, as you get more and more sanskars, then when a devotee sits down to remember, he may choose any of those past experiences, remembering that joyfully, and then it will turn into actual, bring that sanskar, then the actual, it will become absorbed and the actual spurt, will go on, and you will reveal, realize something new also, on top of the past impressions. Oh, you may have just answer my question because my question is that the understanding is that that form of the Lord that will manifest at that stage mm -hmm. when there's underground will be once each day. Mm -hmm. So my question is now, where is that form of the Lord coming from? What dictates it? What that form yes, of the Lord? Is, well, you, you know, know we, we, we mentioned how the first qualities are coming by hearing, right? right? Hearing, chanting, then remembering. The hearing facilitates the chanting, and hearing and chanting facilitates the, the smaranam. So, whomever you're associating with, you'll get the impression, the experience of that form of Krishna, which is of their, of their mood. So if you associate with people in different moods, then still different impressions will come. And so you will not become fixed or attracted to one as the kind of internal confusion will go on. And that is the meaning of Sajate Asya is big day. One should try to associate with those who's here Ashai means Atikaran. Jat means category and Sa means the same. Sajate Ashaye. That's in the locative case. So in the Ashai, which is Sajate of the same category. So if, if there's a devotee who wants to serve in Madhuri Rasa, and you want to serve in Madhuri Rasa, so you are Sajate Ashya. Your, your undercurrents are in, in the same category. Yes. And th this would be for, like, a, in a theoretical level. If we, don't have, we haven't realized mm -hmm. what our relationship is. Yes. Then we're, oh, we, we want to aspire for Madhuri Rasa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to take association. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me clarify that also. You see, because what, very often, many of the things that we think about or we are maybe practicing, uh, that we are thinking this is bhakti, is actually only the pravesh dwara, the door. Not act, because bhakti is an expect, bhakti is a summit of adhini. So if there's no summit, it's no realization, no bhakti actually. We're only in the stage of development of our faith and steadiness that we can experience bhakti one day. You see. So actually of the 64 angles of bhakti in Bhakti Rastamata Sindhu, the first 20, Rupa Goswami after describing the first 20 says, actually this is only Praveshwara. It's the door to enter. And then the, then the angles come. Now, in regard to your question, well, how do you kind of become fixed on one 
in those initial stages. So that is called, actually, I prepared completely different classes. See my slides and everything? So I'll give that class I was going to give now on Radhanam in the evening. But this is a, will make a good platform for it. I want to respond to your needs because I'm seeing a thirst. There's a thirst here. And so I don't want you to be thirsty. So, what is Diksha? In the Shastra, and it's been quoted in Pramaya Ratnavali of Sila Bhavadipa Devotion, he said, Tapa Pundram Nama Yaga Nama Mantra Yaga Chaita Chaiva Panchada Anihi Pancha Sanskara Param Aikanti Bhaitava so the meaning is this, Diksha is a process which has pancha sanskar, five sanskars. They are tapa udva, udva pundram, tapa udva pundram, nama, mantra, yaga, pancha sanskara. So the first one is tapa. Tapa means uh, burning. So if you go to the, who's ever been to Udupi? Yeah, it's the center of the our our Sampradaya before Mapu appeared. Was it, it, it's still there? We are the Brahman Madhvagodiya Sampradaya, but Mapu's contribution is a more great extension of what was given by Madhva. But if you go to the Madhva Sampradaya there, if you want to be initiated, you have to be burnt. Would they get hot iron with the chakra? and the conch, and they go and they burn it onto your body. You see? I think it's very good. Because <laughs> yeah? now these you know, fast food drive-by initiations take place all the time. So very easily. If a guru came with a hot iron and said, who wants to come initiation? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah? That's> very good. <laughs> right? Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Then, yeah? Wouldn't be going, this kind of stuff wouldn't be going on. So tapper is the first thing, burning. <laughs> now, Sula Bhakti no Thakur explained that Mahaprabhu is very merciful, so in his line, we don't do that. <laughs> in Udupi, if you go, not only do you have to get your branded and your initiation, but every year you have to renew your membership. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure you still want to be a devotee, you don't want to blow. You have to prove it and come and get it from the guru every year. Yeah? Okay. So, Silo Thakur said that in the Gauri line we don't do that. But we do the essence of it. See, the essence of it is not getting a scar. The essence of tapa is Anutapa, regret. Anu is afterwards. Tapa means, but the, af the word for regret or repentance in Sanskrit is anutap, means the after burning. You did something wrong, and instead of walking around with your head up all puffed up thinking I'm great, you feel really bad about it. That's called repentance, regret. Anutap. So a guru should not give initiation to the disciple. Unless and he, until he sees in his eyes, Anuta, that that devotee is crying. Alas, alas, I have wasted my life. Hmm? In sense gratification, in karmas. Gopinath, Mamani Vedana Suno, Vishayi Durjana, Sadaka Veratpa, Kichuna Oh, Gopinath, I am a Vishayi sense gratifier. I am wicked. I have wasted my life. I have fallen in the dark world of material existence. Amara jivana sada paparata nahi ko punyara lesha karera udvega diyachi yekoto diyachi divera klesha. I am so sinful. I give, I've given so much pain to other people. 
I'm so wicked that when I see other people are successful, then I burn, it hurts me. Why is he so successful? Why so talented, qualified? But if I see someone suffering, then I feel satisfied. See, the has told his song about the envious nature of the living conditioned soul in this world. All conditioned souls, they are in a full, they are corrupt to the core, top to bottom. No goodness at all. Kichunahim Orugun. There are no attributes. Kutaba Bhaktasra, Kulaba Haguna. Munorate Nasati Dabut Obahi. Those who are not this kinchin bhaktas, what good qualities do they have? Nothing. Because they're on the mental platform. Avi Vastiti Chitasya Pasadu bi Bayamkara. He said, if someone's mind is not steady, their chitta is not steady, then even if they're nice to you, it's terrifying and dangerous. Because the association of a worldly person will bring you down. And they can change one moment to another, like Kamsa Maharaj. Oh, my dear sister, let me drive your chariot. Then the next moment, I'll stay. Hmm? Hmm? The voice in the sky said, The eighth child of David, he will kill you. Then the next minute, he's grabbing his sister's hair and trying to cut off her head. So, this is the nature of materialistic persons. They can change in a second. So, the first, sign, the first part of Diksha is that the disciple should have anutap, burning in the heart, not on the skin. The heart should be burning with regret. That means that he's turning away from material life. Then the second sanskar, Urdhva Pundra, Tapa Pundram. Pundra means Tilak. Guru gives Tilak. But Urdhva Pundra. Not three lines like this, horizontal. Hmm? Urdhva, going up. So going up, Urdhva Pundra means that the disciple having by tapa turned away from the material world, he is looking up. All his ambitions, all his aspirations and his future prospects, he sees beyond this world in, in the Loka Vrindavan, not here. His anger is not here. His goal is not here. He's not investing here for the future. He's investing everything there. Don't seek treasures in this world where Thieves steal and moths corrupt. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven. I heard someone say that. So, so that is called Urdhva Pundra. So receiving tea like at the time of initiation from Guru is not, it's not a fashion accessory. Got a bead bag, a chana, and it's all the fashion accessories. No, the tea like means we have tapa turned away from the world, and now all our ambitions are located only above. So then, tapa pundra tata nama. Now nama means you re you re you receive a spiritual name. Who you were before, whatever. Back to Edward. Back to John. Back to Lawrence. He's dead. That life is over. Brown hmm? up the hay. Carried him to the gat and set him on fire. Gone. <laughs> you have a new name now, and your new name is Krishna Das, Govinda Das, Chaitanya Das. That means one has to give up all the pride of uh, the one's jati. I'm not a Brahmin Kantri Vaishya Sutra. I'm not a Brahmachari Grihastha Vanaprastha Osanyas. Who am I? Krishna Das. Agrahani Mukti Tabi Sarva Bandhanash. Tabi Sehite Parit Si Krishna Das. This type of Das is very, very high. Extremely high. Hmm? You should not be eager for titles. Srila, Sri Srimad. Paramahamsa Parivraja Kataria. Mm -hmm. Amnaya Sarvabhoma. All these titles. Just try to have this title, Das. 
Agrahai Mukti Tabisavabandanas, when a person is liberated and all bondage to material existence is smashed, after that, Tabise Hoite Pari Sri Krishna then this type of das is applicable, not before. But anyway, Gurudev gives a name, das. We should identify with that and try to fulfill the meaning of that name. And the name means giving a spiritual name and also giving. Harinam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that is the uh, third sanskar. Then the fourth one, mantra. Here mantra means diksha mantra. So by diksha mantra, the spiritual master gives you a diksha mantra, and this mantra has an ishta dev. Right now we're coming to the answer to your question. How do you focus on what is the day if you really don't have any realization of anything? This is the point here. Mantra. If Guru gives you Gopal Mantra, then you wish the day is Gopal. Right? Not go Nishinadev. Not go Ramachandra. Not much me Arayan. Guru is giving Gopal Mantra. So, and this uh, Diksha Mantra, Divya Mugyanam, Hyatra Mantra Shimati, Bhagavad Surupa Gyana Tena, Bhagavad Sarmanda Vishesh Gyanam Cha. Jiva Goswami explains the meaning of Divya Gyan is transcendental knowledge given in the form of a mantra of the Swarup of Krishna and Vishesh Sarmanda, your particular special relationship with Krishna. So two things are given in Diksha. Diksha, din something is given, ksha something is taken away. Material sanskars are taken away. And something is given, divya dhyan. It has two aspects. Krishna swarup, the knowledge of Krishna swarup. That is Bhagavat swarup dhyana, Bhagavat sambandha vishes dhyana cha. And vishes sambandha, your particular relationship with Krishna. That impression is given through diksha. For example, let's say, if a woman gets married, in the wedding ceremony, you know, in a Vedic wedding ceremony, then you have to walk around the fire. When you do Tosin Parakrama, you do Tosin Parakrama, clockwise. Because clockwise indicates liberation. But when you get married, you have to go around the fire anti-clockwise. <laughs> indicates bondage. That you'll be hundreds of, you will be husband and wife for seven lifetimes. So in that wedding ceremony, then the, the priest makes the wife say to the husband, Swaha, one time, one time, one time Swaha, and such a Sambandha, that they are together for seven lifetimes. So if Gurudev is giving you a mantra like Gopal Mantra, and you are saying Swaha to Krishna, ten times in the morning, ten times in the noon, and ten times in the evening, thirty times a day, every day, what kind of Sambandha will come? So, mantra, that is the next sanskar. And then the next sanskar is called yag. Yaga. And he, yag means archan, learning how to serve the deity. So, because in the beginning you cannot see the, the form, the, the murti of your mantra, so Gurudev said, look, he invites Krishna to come outside. He said, look, you can serve here. And this is why those without diksha can't serve the deity. Because this deity and their mantra is the same person. You're serving the ishtade of your mantra. So this is the meaning of yag, or the fifth sanskara, which is learning how to do archan. So, amihi, amihi, pancha sanskara, param aikanti heitavaha. These five samskaras which comprise diksha are the cause of paramaikanti, supreme one-pointedness. That means the chitta becomes steady, one-pointedness, chittaikagra, steadiness, nishta, chittaikagra. One-pointedness of the chitta and one-pointedness towards one, ishtadev. It gives that impression. And then gradual steadiness comes, then that Ishtadev will be reflected on the chitta 
And then even seeing the deity outwardly, the beauty will start to manifest. When the mind is steady, you look at the deity, and you can experience an otherworldly sweetness and beauty, which is not even the mature eyes cannot see it. Krishna is the, the Vigra is mercifully manifesting his sweetness to us. When we take a darshan with a steady heart, with devotion of our Ishtadev. So, uh, this is the process. Then after that, you can easily sit and do smile. Even if you're not in front of the deity, you can chant Hare Krishna and the, and the samskar of your Ishtadev is coming. The beauty is coming in your heart again and again. And as the heart becomes more purified, then you realize that this bigger is not hard, but soft. Not only soft, but fragrant. And charming. And moving his eyebrows. Yeah? Glancing lovingly like this. So the various uh, qualities of Krishna begin to manifest. So, do, does that go some way to answering the question? Yeah. The, the transition between no realization and some realization. How it's smoothly manifested by our process of of but when the Guru is given the Diksha Mantra, yes. is it that he is transferring that Ishtadev from his heart into the heart of the disciple? Yes. The mantra is, yeah, it's right there in, in, in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. One of the first stories in Srimad Bhagavatam yesterday is telling his own history. And Narad Muni said to him, Iti Murti Abhidani Na Mantra Murti Mamurti Kam Yajate Yadite Yadya Purusha Manye Tad Samyak Tad Darshanam Samyak Tad Darshanam Puman. Narmun is saying that Murti Abhidhani Na. The mantra has a murti. Mantra murti a murti kam. The word murti means form, but it also means hard. So he says, this, the murti of this mantra is amurti, not hard, very soft. He is directly Krishna himself. And so by remembering that mantra, the form of Krishna appears. How the form of Krishna appears? Exactly, how does it happen? Yesterday, Maharaj was speaking about sound. Right? So this sound, which come, which is the quality of Akash, Shabda, which is quality of Akash, that's not the sound that manifests the country is made of. Everyone can speak that sound. Right? Srila Gaurav used to say, when a pure Vaishnava speaks, this is Vaikuntha Vayu. This is the air coming from the spiritual world. But when an ordinary person speaks, or a person who has no realization, then this is called Nasik Vayu. No, that means nose. The air that went in his nose just came out. Still a good Okay. So Shanta Brahma, transcendental sound, is not that Shanta that comes from the material Akash. That's a product of Tamagun. Ahankari in Tamagun. That sound will not save us. Shanta Brahma will save us. So I make this is a little introduction. In the afternoon, we'll tell the class of Nam, Radha Nam. But I felt like I had to do some cut a few jungles a little bit in regard to the meaning of Sravanam, the meaning of Kirtanam, and the meaning of Smaranam. So we'll be ready in the evening. We'll discuss um, the Nam Tattva in a general sense, and then from there, how Radharani's name is present oh, in many places all around Sri Lanka. So that will be the evening class. I don't want to go on too long because we'll get indigestion. So just digest the things we have discussed today. Let me just tell one thing. One more. You know, in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, second verse. Who you knows second verse? I learned this verse from Maharaj. He told me. My chit is crumpled now. <laughs> <laughs> Like about 32 years ago, he told me this verse. I don't know. Wow. Where, where was Spark Hill? Spark Hill, right? Spark Hill, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, the second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Dharma Prajita Kaita Vutra Karmone Matsaranam Satam 
प्रेदम वस्तवम अर्थवास्तु शिवदम तपात्रयोन्मूलनम श्रीमद् भागवते महामुने कृते किंबा परायिश्वरः सद्योरित्यपरुदते अत्र कृति भी सुसु सुबीस्तचनात in the second two lines, it is said, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. This Srimad Bhagavatam was manifest by Mahamuni. Who is Mahamuni? Krishna. No, Prabhupada says Vyasadev. But at the end of the Bhagavatam, I said yesterday that just like Krishna in he teaches the Bhagavatam to Brahma, and then Krishna becomes Brahma to teach it to Nara, and then he becomes Nara to teach it to Vyasa, and then he becomes Vyasa to teach it to Shukadev, who teaches it to Sutta Goswami, and Sutta Goswami is speaking, and he's very humble. He's not saying, now Krishna has appeared in my form to teach Shamaka Rishi, but that's the, the Dwani of the world. So Mahamuni is Vyasa, but the deeper meaning is Mahamuni means the great thoughtful person. Muni is who does mana meditation, who is deeply thoughtful. That is Krishna Himself. He's deeply thoughtful. Why? Because he's always thinking of Radharani. So that's Krishna. He revealed Himself in the form of Sri Bhagavata Mahamuni Krite Kimvapara Ishwara. What's the use of any of the scripture? Sadhyo immediately Avarudate Aptakrtibi Sosru Sudhistachana. When the pious person he is Srimad Bhagavatam. Then, immediately, Tachanat, in that moment, the Supreme Lord becomes captured within his heart. Avarudhate, that means Krishna comes and the door slams shut. And it's locked and Krishna can't get out. Krishna now trapped. But Krishna is only trapped by what? By praying, by love. So simply by hearing Bhagavatam, Krishna comes. Tachanat means at that very moment. Tat. That kshana moment. That's a spurti from him. That's what it means, Ravana. Tachana. That moment he comes. Now, kshana, the word kshana also means a festival. Tachana, because hearing Krishna's own pastimes in the Bhagavatam, like Rasalila, hmm? it's such a festival for Krishna. Says, oh, wait, I'm late for the festival. Let's go. Hmm? Just like all of you. Oh, there's a festival in Miami. You have to go. <laughs> Flying from... Boston and North Carolina and England and everything. So when someone's listening to Sri Lanka Bhagavatam, Krishna says, oh, there's a festival going on. Woo! And he runs there, he doesn't want to miss it. And he goes into the heart, he becomes trapped there. At once, touch on it. Now the question comes here. Kriti B Susrus wish by the pious persons who simply desire to hear. Even not hear, desiring to hear. So susubis is the desiderative form of the verb. So what does it mean by a pious person? Kriti be Kriti. Kriti. And account that means a pious or accomplished person. Kriti be is the, the plural. The instrumental. Kriti be susubis. So by the pious, what does the pious person mean? Jiva Swami explains. It means this. Labdwa nubra acharyat Tena sandashita agamaha Mahan purusha abhyachen Mahan purusha abhyachen Mohtya abhimata Here Labdwa nubra acharyat 11th canto of Krishna speaking to Buddha a person, Labdva Anubra, who has attained the mercy, Acharyat, of the Acharya. That means he received Diksha. One who has received Diksha Mantra from the Acharya, Labdva Anubra Acharyat, Tena Sandarshita Agamaha. And he has been shown the Agama Darshan. That means Tantra, Vaishnava Tantra, the methods of Puja, Archan. In other words, Guru gave mantra and taught him how to do archan, how to wake up, take shower, put on tilak, remember Gayatri mantras, serve the deity, offer bhog, do arti, dressing, decorate, all these things. That's the, the archan. So, 
Mahapurusha Abhyata and Murtyabi Mata Atmana. And he will serve the deity in accordance to his Abhiman. Here. Murtyabi Mata Atmana. Serve the deity according to his conception. Now the implication here is that the Acharya taught him to worship a Shalagram Shila. So Shalagram Shila actually has no visible form. Shalagram Shila is not actually a form of God. No. Krishna has no incarnate like Rasgula Rup. Kesha Vadvita Rasagula Rupa. Krishna has no ball, incarnation as a, as a round ball. No. Shastra said that the Shalagram Shila is the Bhagavad Arka Adisthan, the place where the Lord form appears. So one could worship a Shalagram Shila and someone may think this is Lord Narayan. If he worships with that Abhiman due to the mantra which was given by his guru, that form will appear in the Shalagram Shila. If he's worshipping as a Dhamadhar Shila, worshipping as Radha Raman like Gopal Bhattaka, then that form will appear. So Murtya Bhimata Atmana. But what form he was worshipping and what form will appear depended on how he was initiated and trained in Archan by the Guru. So when a person has undergone the Pancha Sanskars of Diksha and the impressions have come of a relationship with one particular deity, that person is called Kriti, accomplished. He becomes accomplished. So when such a refined and accomplished disciple who's been trained by his Diksha Guru in this way simply desires to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, then for that person, the Supreme Lord immediately comes in his heart and is bound by his love, simply by hearing Bhagavatam. That's why you get two types of prampara. Pancharatrik prampara means guru disciple, guru disciple by connection of diksha, the pancha sanskars. But it may be that one of those disciples became refined by that process and went to hear from a Mahabhagavad Vaishnava Bhagavatam. And then listening to him, Sajori Tatchanat. He was a kriti. And as soon as he heard the praying came by hearing Bhagavatam from his Bhagavad Guru, now that becomes a connection in the Bhagavad Guru Prampara. So this is why two types of Prampara are there. And the Bhagavad Guru Prampara includes the Panchatrik Prampara because the effect of the Bhagavad Prampara generally in this Kali Yuga. It, there's a power with, even without diksha to give everything. But people are so contaminated in Kali Yuga that they have to undergo the Pancha Sanskaras to experience the benefits. Diksha is not necessary. Just Ravana and Kirtan and Osmarana will give everything. But Srila Jiva Goswami Pad said, because the Jiva has the conditioned souls, especially in Kali Yuga, have two faults. One is called Kadarya Shil. Kadarya Shil. Shil means character or behavior, and Kadari means unmeritorious, impious, kind of contempt contemptible, abominable, because they have bad habits. Kadari Ashiro, bad habits. So they cannot get the benefit, they don't experience the power of Nam Rukun Lila in Shravanam Kirtanam and so on, and hearing Bhagavatam. And the other fault is called Vikshipta Chitta. That the chitta is vikshipta, thrown here and there. They live in a state of distraction. The mind is always wandering here and there, and go to the computer, have 20 tabs open at the same time. Oh, always the mind going everywhere. Can't focus on one thing. Right? So because of these two faults, what are the two faults? What's the first one? Kadarya shiro. Kadarya shiro. Their bad habits. Impious, unmeritorious behavior and character. And the second one? The chitta chitta, distracting chitta. So, how to help a person get over that? That's the pancha sanskar. Because pancha sanskar is anihi pancha sanskara param aikanti hetava. It's the cause of supreme one pointedness. Then, when that person now he becomes kriti. Sadyori, the other root of the other Kriti, this is Lucidus, that he is Bhagavatam, but he gets everything. Krishna is captured in his heart.
Gurudev said, you know, if someone comes, you should sing Kirtan for them when they're leaving. Sing Kirtan. So Harikata came, and Harikata was leaving after Kirtan.